Hi everyone, um, here I am back with my grid block um, after the live stream unfortunately was a little bit lacking um, internet speed from my side and this kind of failed. I'm sorry for that but as promised I'm just gonna kind of in a hopefully short little video repeat what um, we did this morning. So um, I have just dropped in a number of patterns from our latest themes just in a random order and I want to show you the grid block in a little bit more detail. So um, if I click into the grid block and just as a disclaimer um, our grid block and also the flexbox um, blocks uh, we made them kind of that they are working and that we could build um, designs with it but especially from the editor side there's lots of things to improve and that are, we are still working on those so um, bear with us on this part it's not perfect so just um, as you know I kind of um, as I go along I kind of mention what is missing um, but it's workable and yeah, we are able to build out these designs maybe I quickly go into the preview just to kind of show you oh some of the patterns that we've um, created lately. So this is like a hero pattern and FAQs. And this is um, the beginning of an about page and a featured testimonial and the footer. So it's kind of coming nicely together. Like this is a random order. The live demo will look different. Um, but yeah, this is our latest agency theme solar one. So I'm just going to work with these patterns because that's what I've been working on. So regarding the grid block, there are a few things to kind of um, know as a background. And uh, therefore I built a little bit of a Figma um, uh, file here. It doesn't look pretty, but I hope it um, brings the point across. So how we are working, so Manu is preparing the patterns in Figma and in Figma um, with uh, I think Shift and G you can kind of like create this grid and he's like preparing the grid in advance and um, I can then see uh, yeah, here layout grids. This is the, the one. I can see um, how the layout align on the grid and in Figma you can say um, how the outer margin should look like uh, which would be the light green elements I've created here and then you create your columns. So uh, for our grid block we're always working with the 12 column grid but it's a little bit confusing in CSS grid because we have a 12 column grid as you can see there are 12 like these white light um, red uh, columns but um, in CSS grid I have 13 numbers and you can see these numbers coming up um, if you go and I open the list view here this is like the most helpful thing ever the list view and you can remember the shortcuts here too so um, in the grid item you can see these grid columns being reflected and you can see the numbers. So we always have 13 numbers from the start to the to the end. And here you see why. So in CSS grid compared to um, typical layout grids you find in, in layout um, software you start with the grid line. So the first grid line that you can see here, the, the blue line is, um, go to inspect. that is uh, the one and then you kind of um, count uh, second line, third line and 13 then is the last line. So you always have 13 numbers and you align your grids. So um, then an additional thing is you have the gap and I go back to this one sits not in the grid items. The, the numbers are in the grid item because you align your grid items. So grid items are like containers inside the grid. You align those um, according to the grid. So as you can see here this grid item is like uh, everything that is the content area. So this little um, pre-title, the title, the button and the 
description text or intro text. And this I grouped together inside the grid item and I positioned it. So I positioned it starting from the second column and ending at the eight column. If I go back into my Figma file, I can now see one, two, so it starts at the second grid line and it ends in the eighth. So this is what I did. And then the image is from the eight to the 13th. And let's check that. So the second grid item, it's just the grid item, so the container and the image. And uh, the reason why I need it to be inside the grid item is so I can um, align it more specifically. And I have all these grid settings here in the block. So this one goes from, in the desktop, goes from starting at eight, grid line eight and ending at 13. So I have um, a grid and inside this grid, I have these two grid items, which are the containers for my content. And um, there's another thing that is the gap. And as you can see here, it's the dark blue lines and the gap starts after the first column. So I can define the gap and then the light blue would be called the grid column. So the terminology is you have the grid lines, which are in a 12 column grid, one to 13. Then you have the gap and you have the actual grid columns. Um, there are also rows and at the moment our grid block doesn't offer rows. So rows would be uh, the columns are the vertical div division and the rows would be horizontal. Um, so from top to bottom and the grids go from left to right, the, the grid columns. So at the moment it's just columns. Maybe later on we will expand the grid block to also include um, include uh, rows, but uh, at the moment we're like fine with that. And the reason why we have the settings that we have at the moment is just that we are building designs and whatever we need for these designs, we will kind of add to the, to the blocks we have. And mostly also like everything that is not available in core blocks that we kind of like want to have more detailed and more specific designs and layouts we kind of build and add for our um, blocks. That's also why sometimes um, we don't prioritize um, that it's like working everything perfectly in the editor. It's mostly just get the patterns out and get um, new something to work with. And then we can like iterate and improve later on. That's kind of the philosophy that we are at at the moment. So um, what's super important for the grid items is and that's also why I would recommend if you can to always work with our patterns that we pre-build and then customize these and maybe save them as reusable blocks or create your own um, patterns out of them is because you always have to check from the positioning side the responsiveness. So as I said here, this is only desktop. You also have tablet and mobile. And at the moment, it doesn't switch automatically to the preview from tablet and mobile. Um, the reason is that it's not like perfect. For instance, I don't like that the preview for the tablet is um, is so narrow and it, I can't um, zoom in or out. I can't stretch that like I would in the inspector, in the browser inspector, but I think this is going to change. So uh, the mobile, and you can kind of, so you have to still click on the preview and go from there. And there is an issue with my flex box. I will fix that. So this is the squeeze text you have here. But as you can see, um, the grids still stay um, 12 grids. So sometimes in CSS grid, um, if you have just CSS, you change the columns. But to make it um, customizable here, we are the settings. We have always the one to 13 number, even on tablet and mobile. Um, so you can kind of realign on the tablet and mobile and you have to go like if you build from scratch, you have to go through each of the settings because by default, nothing is set. So it makes sense to kind of go from what we've built and customize these and then maybe um, save your customizations as reusable blocks. So uh, the grid item has a lot of settings bes besides positioning, which is the most important. So you have to set these 
The additional ones you don't really need to set. Uh, margins, for instance, is um, mobile tablet desktop as well, because sometimes we just uh, need like a top margin um, spacing and then on tablet we maybe need it as well, but then on desktop we go um, not stacking things below each other, but next to each other and then we want to set the margin to zero. And if I leave it on mobile like seven and if I don't reset it to zero, it will stay, um, it will stay seven. So you have to like reset it to zero in, in the responsiveness. So these settings are quite detailed, but um, it is really important to have them. So we only built them because we felt like we needed them. Uh, this in this case is uh, with the margins, I can add spacing below elements and I can define how large the spacing should be for each um, breakpoint instead of like having just the automatic responsive spacing I have available. Um, then alignment is a big one. So alignment, there are two settings and these are reflected in CSS grid. So it's just the same settings we have in CSS grid. And for, for explaining the alignment, I go to the article published um, on CSS tricks called Complete Guide to CSS Grid or to Grid. And this is really a good resource. I oftentimes still go on and kind of sneak peek um, for the settings. So explaining the alignment. Oh, let me see where I have it. So there are two options. First is the justify self alignment. And um, this is the second one. So this one is for aligning elements either from the start, which is always the left side, or the end, which is the right side, centered or stretch. So if you go into the settings, we have exactly the same setting, start and center and stretch. So you can align elements like precisely as on CSS grid. And then the next one is align items. And this is, um, so one was from horizontal, from left to right, and this one is top to bottom, so vertical. Either top for start, end for bottom, center for the center, and stretch if you want to stretch it all the way from top to bottom, which is helpful if you maybe have a colored element, like with a background color. So here you can see again, these are exactly the same settings. And why I have this for this grid element, why I have it centered is because um, what I wanted, you can see if I change that, now this always starts at the top or you, you could start it at the bottom. But I, what I wanted to do was um, that I wanted to have this content element always centered um, in comparison to the image and the image would most in most cases be larger. So that's why I have it centered. So this is quite um, a helpful setting and you kind of maybe have to play around with it to, to see how it really works. Sometimes I put, if I work in, in a grid, I put a background on the grid just for like seeing what I actually have available. Sometimes that is helpful and then you can get rid of the background again, just for working mode. So um, I think this is kind of the main settings and there are a few more settings like stacking and overlapping gutter and you really kind of don't need these ones. There are for more like specific um, layouts we, we build and also margins go like positive and negative. And this is pretty cool feature if you want to overlap certain elements and then together with stacking you get the stacking order for each grid so you could kind of like overlap things and rearrange the stacking order but these are like pretty advanced like more arty playful um, uh, settings that you maybe don't need to be using um, on, on your designs right away and we will be adding more and more pre-built patterns. We're working on a pattern library at the moment too. So 
there will be more pre-built patterns that you can kind of use and then maybe customize a little bit to your needs. So yeah, most of them you can ignore, they are more advanced. Then you also have the responsive border radius and spacing um, available in the grid, but um, spacing you can use, but border radius is just like in certain edge cases. And color too, I would always kind of recommend if you have spacing um, to put that on the outer group block and and kind of not on the grid or grid item. It's just uh, more easy to have it like always on the same settings. And why do I do we put always um, that, why do we put the patterns inside a group block? Because this way you can just have like the whole section and you can set a background if you wanted to and um, kind of easily customize that if you if you needed to and uh, you can c super easily like rearrange your your uh, grouped patterns on the on the page and uh, yeah it's just good to have then the spacing on these outer group blocks so i would put the spacing here on these on these outer things and then depending on your needs you can kind of like erase it from there so you don't uh, have to worry about like finding the spacing on the inner elements so on the grid and grid items i mostly don't do the spacing i put it inside either the the smaller elements inside a grid item or on the outer group block i think this is the main kind of idea oh i forgot about the gap so this is one thing that is not reflected at the moment in the editor yet but uh, we have on the outer outer grid you set the gap so you don't need to set much else you could set a color or spacing but you mostly don't need to do any other settings but um you have the gap setting remember this is the um the gaps in between the the columns so you set this on the outer grid block and you at the moment we have none small medium large and extra large and we will probably expand these and then we have the system that's why we use the t-shirt settings and i will add that to the documentation but um it's t-shirt sizes because it's automatically responsive so um but it comes out at desktop the s the small one comes out at 16 pixels then 24 32 and 48 and we will probably have an 8 one soon and maybe a bigger one as well so uh, yeah you set the grid there and then um, in general i would recommend that you always uh, for one page of one one website you keep the gap for all your paddings um, all your patterns on the same size so it aligns um, like just perfectly um, otherwise it looks weird there are always exceptions like maybe a media gallery or image gallery or something but in general if you go for a 32 pixel grid in desktop you kind of stick with it throughout your website so things can align nicely I think that was it from my side and yeah as you can see we really work with the grid block on all our elements to align things and then maybe inside the grid items we also use flexbox for smaller alignment things and I will do a separate video for that. So let me know in the comments if you need any more explanations or if um, you want anything else that I kind of add and explain. And thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much. Bye.